Church. Hope you're doing well on this amazing day. It is January the 6th and we are in part 6 of this brilliant kind of mini devotional series that we're talking about, Believing for the Good, from Romans chapter 8, 28. And we know that in all things, what things? All things, not just some things, big things, not just little things, but in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. I actually want to draw another passage into our devotion this morning, and it's Psalm 100 in the Message Translation. And it says this, On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this. God is God. And God, God. He made us. We didn't make him. We're his people, his well-tended sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourself at home, talking praise. Thank him. Worship him. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and forever. I mean, what an action-packed passage from the Bible full of whoop moments. Read it again in your own time or play this back if you get a chance. Psalm 100. It's brilliant. It just makes you want to praise. I I really love the phrase here. Know this, God is God and God, God. In other words, how else do you explain God apart from the fact that he is God? My dad always always used to say to me, if we can explain God fully, then he's not God. Recently, I was asked to write an article for a leadership magazine. I introduced the article in the following way. Here's what I wrote. Jesus never produced manuals and held leadership conferences with the best known leadership gurus of the day. He didn't need to. He exemplified leadership at its best. With an appointment in ministry that lasted only three and a half years, Jesus revolutionized the world whilst maintaining a simple ethos for ministry. The trap of leadership in the 21st century is the desire to complicate the essentially simple mandate for leadership. And I think that similarly, in our followership of Jesus and the danger in 2022, is that we can complicate what it means to follow Jesus. Recently, I was in prayer for our church. Pray every day for the church. Pray every day for you, church. And in particularly, on this occasion, I was praying for the growth of a department within our church. And for some, I was thanking God for the people who'd been saved and added to the church and added to team. And for other departments, I was saying, God, how can we fill them? And I spent so much time asking God how we can fill them that I really felt like God spoke to me and say, when did you become God in this relationship? Wow, I was taken aback by it. Glenn, why is it your job to fill it? Let me explain what I mean. Uh, when I, back in 2003, I remember watching a, a film. I know 2003 is a long time ago now, but Jim Carrey starred in the film Bruce Almighty. And if you saw it, you remember that Bruce was given God's job. Now, at first he enjoyed his privileges as God and, and the funky music played as Bruce started to display his amazing divine powers, parting tomato soup, blowing up fire hydrants, um, even lassoing and pulling in the moon just to impress his girl. However, the fun really started one evening when Ben took on the role of, uh, of uh, when Jim, sorry, took on the role of answering God's prayers. And the hilarious scene which followed featured Bruce Almighty working out a way of answering all the prayers. And he finally decided to say yes to them all, only discover to discover that millions of new prayers had been prayed while even typing in the word yes on his computer. The frustration of playing God was evident for all to see, humorous though it was. Listen, when were you last incredibly frustrated with your followership of Jesus? My frustration at not being able to fill departments as I wanted was huge, but God's question to me sorted that out somewhat. Glenn, when did you become God? The answer is, I hadn't, and I wasn't. And as Bruce aptly demonstrated in the film, Bruce Almighty, gosh, who would want God's job anyway? You know, church, there are many times in our lives when we worry about things that are not our concern. We give our attention to matters that are not our business. We set ourselves up as God, as a demigod. And my challenge to you is this, know this, God is is God. And God, well, he is God. Maybe make a choice this morning, today, wherever you are, to resign 
as the CEO of your own universe and let God be God. Here's the quote of the day. Know this, God is God. And God, God. Psalm 103. He's a good God and God works. Have a great day, church. And I'll see you tomorrow for our final devotion of the week.